This video is about the latest attempts to discredit Sadiq Khan by various low-level grifters who are adored by the gammon. By the way, I should be using the word gammon a lot in this video, so if that offends you, please stop watching now and go off to your safe space. Or, you can educate yourself behind the meaning of the word by watching my video, Is Gammon a Racial Slur? Spoiler alert, it's not. Links are below in the description box and on your screen at the end of the video. The particular grifters I'm focusing on in this video are Mayoral election losers Lawrence, 1.9% of the vote Fox, as well as the guy who helped run his campaign, Martin Daubney, who looks like the pedo policeman from Line of Duty. Their latest anti Sadiq Khan grift is, like all the other anti Khan grifts, designed to make Gammon angry about absolutely nothing and to keep them at maximum anger levels at all time, which some may argue is an extra easy task when so many Gammon are far right and the target of their anger is a Labour politician who is also a brown skinned Muslim. Sadiq Khan is the far right trifecta, enough to make both grifters and Gammon cream their pants. After Sadiq, 38% more of the vote than Lawrence Fox Khan, stated that a third of all journeys in London are less than 2 kilometres in length and announced a new fleet of e-bikes for Londoners, all of which help reduce emissions, car journeys and boost people's health, you would think that it would be impossible for people to complain about this. Enter the ultimate gammon baiters, the Daily Mail. Alright for some, Sadiq Khan is driven to work in a £300,000 5 litre armoured Range Rover, whilst commuters endure packed tube trains. I mean, he's literally trying to do something about that by adding more e-bikes to encourage people to use different modes of transport. And he's trying to increase the capacity of the tube via a government bailout of £2 billion, which the Tories are refusing to fully hand over. But do go on. And drivers face a new £15 congestion charge. Ah, oh, how dare people be charged for driving machines that pollute and make roads congested during a literal climate emergency. Sadiq Khan is so evil, isn't he? They say, Sadiq Khan's bulletproof vehicle, decked out with underfloor blast protection, armoured glass, spike-proof tyres, a 5-litre engine and an emergency escape system, is provided by Scotland Yard for his safety after threats were made against him. I wonder where those threats could have come from. It's a mystery. Grifter Martin Daubney tweeted, Sadiq Khan says, we should avoid a car-led recovery from COVID-19. Sadiq Khan also says, I get driven to work in a £300,000 5-litre Range Rover entirely paid for by taxpayers. Martin Daubney there revealing that he didn't actually read the Daily Mail story before tweeting and instead just reacted to a headline. He may have even had to open the article in order to get that screen grab of the headline, but then failed to scroll down to read beyond the sensationalist headline. That is classic grifting by Martin there. It's no wonder Steve, Kate and Ted found him out in the end. Now Lawrence Fox retweeted Martin, adding some comments, but also tweeted, You would have thought that solving London's violent crime epidemic would be Sadiq Khan's number one priority, but he's too busy telling you that you must ride a bike to work from the back seat of his Range Rover. The mayor is driven to work in an armoured car because grifters like you and Martin exist purely to make gammon despise Sadiq Khan. I mean, I still can't quite work out at this stage where the threats against Khan are coming from, but there might just be a link here. Let me think. No, oh, no, no, wait, sorry, sorry. I seem to have made a mistake. People are telling me they don't hate Sadiq Armoured Car Khan based on his skin colour or that he's a Muslim. It's actually his poor record on knife crime. My bad. Turns out they're angry because he's not Batman. But even when Sadiq Khan gets a Batmobile, you're still mad at him. He can't win. Listen, the point of this video is to ultimately address the one concern that Gammon have with Sadiq Khan. The one thing that seems to justify their bigotry towards him. Turns out, it's actually a sham. They've been lied to. Surprise, surprise. These people hate the crime rate in London, particularly violent crime, stabbings and shootings and so on. Often young black males are the perpetrators and victims of these crimes. It's usually gang related and Gammon feel that Khan is doing nothing about it. His head is in the sand and so forth. But the grifters they follow who influence their opinions and keep them angry do so without revealing the entire truth about the crime rate and the response. So, who is responsible for this? Well, at the end of 2019 it was revealed that 23,500 police staff were cut under the Tories. The most effective region is London which has lost almost half, 47% or 9,000 jobs of its police staff since 2010, including 72% of PCSOs. 
The worst of the cuts were inflicted in the Metropolitan Police during Boris Johnson's term as Mayor of London. In April this year, it was reported the number of Met Police officers increased by 874 to 32,475 in total since Mr Khan took office in May 2016. The net increase has been partly driven by London receiving extra officers following a 2019 government pledge to provide an additional 20,000 across the country over three years. Met Commissioner Dame Cressida Dick, Lol, and Mr Khan believe the capital is entitled to 6,000 of the new recruits out of the 20,000, but only received 1,369 last year, with the further 1,370 due this year, following £255 million of home office funds. Basically, Sadiq Khan simply doesn't know how many police officers he'll have on the beat tackling violent crime during his second term as London Mayor, saying, The bad news is the government has only given us around 1,300 in the first two years, well short of the 6,000 requested. And just to make it clear to people who say Sadiq Khan has his head in the sand when it comes to violent crime, separate to the Home Office funding, Mr Khan has directly funded 1,300 additional offices, 300 by increasing his share of council tax and 1,000 from diverting business rate income. Sadiq Khan has spent just over £1 billion on policing, which is a city hall record. Or according to Gammon, his head is in the sand. Now to make matters worse, grifters like Lawrence Fox, who ran for London Mayor, offered to increase police numbers by 3,000 in total. Now, if you include that 3,000 with the 1,300 already supplied by the Tories under Sadiq Khan's first term in office, it still leaves Lawrence Fox 1,700 police short of Sadiq Khan's bare minimum total of 6,000. How did Lawrence Fox say he would fund his 3,000 police officer drive? It's by sacking members of City Hall. He's literally saying we can have more police, but only if 300 people lose their jobs first. Someone who's against council culture (laughs) and for civil liberties is saying, no, you can't have a job, not you specific people, because we need more coppers on the beat. Unlucky, but most importantly, and what makes Lawrence Fox such a grifter, is nowhere in his manifesto for London Mayor or at any point on his campaign trail did he say in detail how he'd actually tackle violent crime. The stabbings, the shootings and murders and so on. The thing that he and all other grifters attack Sadiq Khan on, on a daily basis. Now Lawrence did announce a very vague way of reducing, quote, petty low-level street crime using the broken windows scheme employed by Rudy Giuliani originally but didn't address the high-level violent crime and murders that he attacks his opponent on, on a daily basis. Now, if Gammon have managed to watch this far into a video that has destroyed one or more of their heroes, then they will be desperate to scream the words, stop and search, stop and search, at this point. Lawrence said he'll tackle knife crime with stop and search. This is correct, there's not a great amount of detail about it, but in an interview with the New Statesman, Lawrence Fox says, and I quote, I want to bring a law in about knife crime. I would say I'm going to stop and search every child, not black children, not white children, not Asian children. I'm going to stop every child to make sure a kid knows when it walks the streets of London that they're going to be stopped at some point. Everybody will be stopped. Now, I'm sure Gammon watching this video will ignore that this is an impossible task with just 3,000 new officers in a police force that is already stretched having to stop every single child in London. And they'll ignore that this policy is possibly the biggest waste of resources I've ever seen proposed by anybody. According to statistics, just over 1 million children and teenagers, that's the ages from 10 to 19, live in London. And this doesn't take into account any knife-wielding children who commute into London for school, work, or leisure, or just for stabbings. There are almost 33,000 police officers currently in London, and even if someone like Lawrence Fox or Sadiq Khan announces something insane like all officers have to stop solving burglaries, rapes, and patrolling the streets in order to search these one million children, then it would take all 33,000 officers 30 years to stop and search each child once. Although Lawrence's extra 3,000 officers will cut that time down by a whopping 2.3 years to 27.7 years of stopping and searching kids. Some of those kids will be 49 years old by the time they're stopped and searched. You know, these 1 million London kids can make the stop and search process much more efficient if they actually murdered each other at a much higher rate. Like around, I'd say around 100,000 extra deaths a year would finally make Lawrence Fox's stop and search policy feasible. Now, I have exposed Lawrence and Martin's grip there quite well, and I tried to inject some comedy into the last serious section, but if you want to see a very 
light-hearted comedy video about Lawrence's mayoral campaign, please watch the two-minute long Lawrence Fox launches his election defeat video. There's also the Lawrence Fox backed to fund the BBC campaign, which is doomed for failure. And I made a video about how GB News fans should be shitting their pants before the channel has even started being broadcast. And of course, there's that video about how gammon is not a racial slur. All those videos are available on my channel. They should be in the description box below and on your screen right now. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.